All right, we have just spent some time walking around the old ghost town of St. Elmo, and now we're gonna head to Tin Cup Pass. Uh, I've never been there before, but it sounds interesting. It looks real fun, and you just, there's a sign right in the middle of St. Elmo. You leave that, there was a sign right there. Uh, looks like this will be really easy to find for sure. And uh, we're gonna see where it takes us. But look, oh man, we got some more old buildings here. This is very cool. So if you like ghost towns, <laughs> St. Elmo, definitely a cool place to stop. I just, uh, it looks like it's gonna get really rocky up ahead. So right where those people are up there, I think we're gonna go ahead and air down. Oh yeah, we're gonna air down right here. <laughs> All right, well, we got aired down right there because right here at the very beginning, I mean, it is pretty rocky and steep. And actually there, we're here during Labor Day weekend and it is FJ Summit or FJ journey or something it was it's a big uh, Toyota FJ event and a bunch of them just went uh, up here without airing down first so I mean not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that but they're gonna be in for a much rougher ride than we are with the much softer tires we have on here so we'll see how this trail goes uh, but I don't even think we're too 10 cup yet that sign said like six miles, or maybe it means that it's six miles of trail. I guess we'll find out. Well, we just finished seven tenths of a mile of straight up rocky uh, climb. It, yeah, it was pretty rough. I'm glad I aired down. I went down to like 16 PSI, made for a much smoother ride going up that. And now we're kind of heading down and really beautiful there's camping sites available here whoa that's really bumpy um, there are camping sites available throughout here they're primitive campsites probably need to come pretty early on a weekend especially a holiday weekend like this to grab one we haven't seen any that are open yet but if we do that'll be a good sign that it's, it's easier to find a spot here but also keep in mind right now we're at 10,000 382 feet so if you aren't used to sleeping at higher altitudes it it can um, be interesting the first couple nights for you you'll find it harder to breathe uh, you're not taking in as much oxygen you might not sleep as well you might wake up with a headache so if you are going to try and sleep at altitudes like this make sure you drink tons of water you really need to hydrate uh, well when you're at these altitudes and if you're going to be sleeping uh, or staying the night at higher altitudes, you definitely want to drink a lot of water because if you get dehydrated, you're going to get altitude sickness and that is no fun at all. Uh, looks like we just came out of the pine trees and now we're in some really thick aspen. You can see some of the leaves are just starting to change uh, to yellow. What is it? It's the beginning of September. So we still have you know, uh, about a month or so before the fall colors really hit strong. But this would be a really beautiful drive during the fall colors. All right, we just hit one and a half miles and we have another, you know, not very steep, but very, very rocky climb here. And it's really pretty. You've got water flowing down it a little bit. It smells great up here today absolutely fantastic nice pine tree scent going on we've got the the sunrider open so we can get fresh air and it's just beautiful i've seen a few people have seen a jeep or two seen all those fjs a bunch of side by sides it's a, definitely a popular trail but really at this point anything with four-wheel drive would be fine there's no real need for high clearance you, there's 
some high areas, but they're easy to just navigate around. So stock Jeep, stock, um, you know, four runner, anything with four wheel drive should be able to do this quite easily at this point. Yeah, boy, at 2.4 miles, there's some uh, old significant uh, avalanche damage. I bet that was quite a while ago. I mean, that wood looks pretty dry, pretty old. But the interesting thing is you can see where it took out this whole section of trees and they've barely, barely started to grow back. It's just an avalanche like that just strips the ground so hard that it takes nature a long time to recover. So very interesting to actually be driving through this avalanche damage here. It's rare that you get to see it this close up. Let me turn the camera a little bit. That's just fascinating, seeing that. It looks like we got some more over here, yep. Over to the left, just another big path of destruction. So at the 5.5 mile mark, you'll hit 11,000 feet above sea level. And it has just been gorgeous through here. It's still been a uh, relatively easy trail for any pretty much stock 4x4 vehicle. There are some really rough spots, some really bumpy spots, but as long as you take it nice and slow and you're in four wheel drive, I've just been in four low this whole time, just cruising right up, no problems. We have seen uh, maybe six to eight empty campsites, and today is Sunday of Labor Day weekend. So if you want to camp at higher altitudes, there's definitely campsites up here. Some of them are more in the open. Some of them are right in, you know, just in the shade of all the trees. Some of them are right next to the little creek down here. I mean, so there's a wide variety of different campsites on, on both sides of the road. The going up the road like we are, the majority of them are going to be on the left-hand side, uh, closer to the creek but you'll see what looks like just a, a really rough road going off of this main road and that's going to take you to a campsite so they're, they're pretty easy to find but just look at these views just absolutely absolutely amazing views Well, that was an interesting coincidence. Uh, uh, we're at like mile five and a half, and we ran into Josh and Christina in the Rubastina over there. So they were they came up last night as well, and uh, found a campsite up there. And uh, yeah, really cool. As far as the trail so far, yeah, you do need high clearance. It's pretty rocky, but I mean, you look up ahead and there's plenty of completely stock uh, Jeep Saharas that aren't having any problems unless they're stuck right ahead of us. Uh, there's the group of FJs that passed us earlier up ahead. So it looks, looks like everyone's having a good time. But I, I will want to, I don't, I want to mention something because uh, my last video that I put out was about the upgrade to the steering box. And I had kind of had a theory that because the gears were tighter and you weren't getting the slop in it, that it might make it uh, even easier off-road versus a lot of people thinking it was going to be worse off-road because you had more road feel. And now that we've been on this for five and a half miles, 
I gotta say, I, I really think this is an improvement off-road as well because it, the steering wheel isn't just getting kicked really hard when you hit a rock. It's, yeah, you do feel it, but at the same time, it's, um, you're not getting that slap from the gears being loose. So it's, while it is a major improvement on-road, it's also a really big improvement off-road. So we gotta navigate some big rocks here. And figure out why everybody has stopped. So right now we've just passed the six mile mark and we're kind of up on a kind of a shelf road here. It's not super steep and it's plenty wide. We've had to pull over to let other people come down. I mean, it's maybe a hundred feet down there, so it's not a real high shelf road. But the terrain definitely changed from all the, you know, like forest area that we were in to this really crazy rocky area kind of reminds me of uh, that last part of Mosquito Pass very similar to this where you're on a shelf road with this really jagged rock stuff everywhere At the 6.8 mile mark, we kind of ran across the, uh, I would call it the worst of it so far. Um, some really big rocks, kind of pretty hefty little obstacles to go over here. But again, in front of us that just went over it are a stock Willys, a stock Sahara, a, a couple of Forerunners, and a handful of FJs. So it's totally doable in a stock vehicle with four-wheel drive. Not a big deal. Um, the more clearance the better, but I don't see anybody scraping on anything. So it's, it's not...
backlog of vehicles, about eight or nine vehicles that were not moving for some reason. And there just happened to be a different path that you could take right there. And it looks like it cuts off, um, I don't know that it really cuts off any time or any real distance, but it does connect back to the same trail that we were on. So we're gonna try this little side trail and uh, see how it is and see if it gets us around all those vehicles that weren't moving. Sounds like I've got some motorcycles coming up here and this is definitely a lot narrower than the trail that we were on. So it remains to be seen whether this was a brilliant idea or a very dumb idea. <laughs> well, I definitely see why nobody else is on this particular trail other than ATVs and side-by-sides because it is rough, rough, rough. And in other places, it's extremely narrow. So if you don't want to risk getting, you know, a little pinstriping, then I would highly recommend not doing it. And this is definitely way more gnarly than staying on the main road. Yeah, I'm scraping some undercarriage there. So if you want it to be a little bit more difficult, yeah, take that little side route right there. Uh, if <laughs> this is a little too much for you, then uh, stick to the main trail. But so far, I mean, look where we're at. We're going down a rock garden into this beautiful meadow with a stream that's going to be right next to us. I'd say in terms of uh, view, I think we, we kind of nailed it on that. And dust from that. Yeah, and, <laughs> and we're not breathing dust from everybody else. That's a good point. But you are going to go a lot slower through here because it's a lot rockier. about nine miles and we've come up on Mirror Lake. Uh, absolutely beautiful. There's some people kayaking, there's people fishing. Um, I, it, my guess is that water's probably pretty damn cold though. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to go swimming in it, but it, acts, it really is a beautiful, beautiful lake up here in the mountains. Uh, I don't know how 
good the fishing is or anything like that, but uh, there are people fishing along the banks and in kayaks. So we're going to take the trail around the lake and keep seeing where this all goes. And if you're wondering, the lake is right at almost exactly 11,000 feet above sea level. So we are pretty high and I'm sure this freezes over pretty early. But it's probably impossible to get to here uh, for very much longer. I would say mid-October at the latest and you're probably not going to make it up here because of snow conditions. I mean, 11,000 feet is pretty high and it's going to get snow early and it's going to get a lot of it. I would say your best time for visiting up here, this again, 10 cup pass is going to be probably late June through mid October. Uh, the rest of the year, it's probably not going to be, uh, possible to get up here. It's high altitude, there's going to be lots of snow, and it's going to come early, and it's going to stay late. But if you catch here at the right time, boy, what a view. Well, we're past Mirror Lake, and this road has our trail has kind of turned more into a road and we're starting to see vehicles that absolutely did not come up the same way we came. So we're guessing that it's going to get easier going down this back side and then we'll figure out what to do from there. But so far, uh, Tin Cup was a lot of fun. Oh, we're airing back up. Uh, we're outside of Tin Cup. I don't know exactly where this is. I think it's called Taylor, uh, something like that. But we're getting ready to get back on the road and swing back around to Nothrop, Nathrop, to hit the campsite again tonight. And then tomorrow, we're gonna hit Chinaman Gulch. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully get to see some people try and crush it on Carnage Canyon. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> But uh, I just, I know better than to try and do uh, Carnage Canyon, so not going to do it. But we are going to hit Chinaman Gulch. Looking forward to it. This was a great trip. I highly recommend it. You come up through uh, around Buena Vista, go up through Mount Princeton, which is gorgeous. There's uh, hotels there you could stay at if you wanted to get a start like that. Hot Springs. Continue on up. Go see St. Elmo. Cut across to... 10 cup just makes for a fantastic day so hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching everybody like share and subscribe <laughs> and i'll catch you next time bye bye